In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to turn this Batman poster using Photoshop into this. So without further ado, let's open Photoshop. Once you're in Photoshop, you're going to come to new file and this menu is going to come up. We are going to go with 18 by 24 inches, 72 resolution and RGB color. Keep in mind that if you're planning to print these posters, you're actually going to want to go with 300 DPI, which is resolution. And you're also going to want to go with CMYK color. Printers just read better when it comes to CMYK. And that means that whatever you're designing with and you're printing, the colors will match very closely. Whereas if you were to design in RGB and then print in CMYK, there's a high chance that the colors you see on screen aren't going to match on paper. Once all those settings are set, we're just going to click create. To make it easier for us, we're just going to place the original poster on top and we're going to reduce the opacity down to let's say 25 26 just for us to see where everything is placed and once we're done with that we're going to click the lock on the right right here also have all the files that you'll need in order to create this poster that you're seeing right now in the description feel free to follow along what i'm doing and then you guys can create your own versions with different movies or characters if you guys have seen my previous designs you'll know that i start with text first and this just allows me to correlate where i want the text before i even bring the imagery in obviously each designer works differently this is just the way that i do it and the way that i find best works for me so we're gonna go and make a Next here, we're going to call it Batman. We're going to go with Folio STD Bolt Condensed, 300 point for now. We can obviously adjust it in the future. Then we're just going to click Alt and drag it down. And it's going to essentially copy what we had before. And here we're going to type V. And then again, we're going to Alt and we're going to bring down and we're going to type here, Unmask the Truth. And we're going to reduce this down to, let's say, 100. So we're just going to place it in here, which we're going to go with Folio STD Light 20 point. Now that that's done, we're going to make it try to match what we have in the background. So there are two methods to resize this. And the first method is just to click it while on the text tool and then you can adjust the point size here so let's say we're going with 400 but the annoying part is we're going to have to resize the box each time that we do that the other option is to make sure you're on the layer click ctrl t on your keyboard and it's going to do a transform tool this basically allows you to transform this freely and again we're going to do the same for the again the same on the bottom one thing to keep in mind as a designer is to keep your files organized this will help you in the future if you ever need to go back to the file or if you're actually working in a team in the future where you need to share files with each other and to do that we're just going to select the top layer hold shift and then we're going to select the last layer that we want in the folder then we're going to click this folder right here on the bottom and it's going to group everything below where if we click this arrow it's going to show everything in that group. The same if we were to hide the group, it's going to hide all the text that we have in that group. Now that we have the text done and we're most likely not going to move it for a while, we're going to lock the layer again. And keep in mind, if you ever need to unlock the layer, you just click this lock icon right here. Now we're going to add the rectangle and the square shapes that we have here before adding the imagery. And the reason we're doing this is because the imagery actually needs to be clipped to the square, which means that the image will actually take the shape of whatever shape you're designing. So with that being said, we're just going to go with the rectangle tool right here. And then we're going to switch the fill to black. And the reason we're doing black is because I want it to match the background here. And we're going to add a stroke of white. Then we're just going to draw the shape right here. Then we're going to do the same for this. If you look closer, you'll also notice that the original image has sort of a round curve, while this one has a much pointier curve. The way to fix this is just by clicking on the rectangle that you want to edit. And these little circles will show on the image that you're selected. This actually allows you to curve the edge just like this. And you're going to find something that you like. I also noticed that with this rectangle, we went with red and it's pretty simple to change that you just come right here to stroke and you're going to find red for whatever reason it's not showing for you to change the colors just go back to the rectangle and then it should show on the top left but usually it should show here on the right once you click the shape another thing to keep in mind is that this rectangle actually has a black stroke inside and you would think to make another shape just to create that black stroke but actually there's another way to do this and it's much easier and it will make sure that it's consistent throughout the whole shape to demonstrate easily we're just going to switch this to white and then we're going to double click the the rectangle right here which will open up the layer styles and then from there you want to go to inner glow and you want to set the blend mode to normal change the color to whatever you want in this case we're going to go with black opacity 100 and then we're going to go with softer and then you want to make sure that the choke is at 100 and the reason it choke is at 100 is because essentially it makes a solid line as you can see here whereas if you were to go with zero you can see that it kind of makes a gradient so again we're going to go with 100 and then find a size that looks good to you and then click ok and then again we're going to switch back to black now that we finished all the edits we wanted to do on that shape we're going to click it hold alt 
hold shift and let's drag it to the side. And the reason we're holding shift is because if we didn't, the shape will actually move easily wherever we want. But if I want it to be exactly aligned, I just hold shift and it will not go up and down no matter what I do. I quickly organize the files again so that I know exactly what I'm working with. And for now, we're going to start with the Riddler. So we're going to log Penguin and Batman. Now that we have the other ones locked, we're going to add the Riddler in here. So we're going to go to file, place embedded, and then we're going to find the image that we want. Once we've added it, you're going to shape it around to the size that you think you want, but don't worry too much about it. If for whatever reason you're not able to resize it, all you have to do is click Ctrl T and it's going to allow you to transform just like you're seeing here. Just make sure not to stretch it out like this because this is essentially distorted design and it's going to make the image very bad and pixelated. Once you're done, just click this check mark right here or if you prefer shortcuts, you can just do control enter. Once we're done with that, we're going to make sure that we're on the Riddler image. We're going to right click the layer and we're going to go create clipping mask. This essentially is going to make the image clip to the shape below. And now we're going to add the filters to this to make the cool effect that you guys saw previously on the poster that I created. To do that, it's very simple. You're just going to click on the layer that you want to add it to. So in this case, the Riddler, you're going to come to filter, noise add noise and you want something that doesn't add too many pixels for example let's go with 20 you can see that it's very pixelated here and we're just going to go with something a lot less but also still have those pixels let's go with 10. once that's done just click ok after that you're going to come to this circle icon right here on the bottom right and then you're going to go to threshold this essentially is going to add this effect that you're seeing right now but before we start you want to make sure that you're clipped again to the image below and then you want to play around with the settings to find something that you enjoy you might be asking why I added noise to the image before I added a threshold and it's because right now we have noise and you can see that it has a lot of detail to the design. But if I was to turn off the noise, you can see that a lot of the detail was lost. Once you're done with that, you can close the Riddler folder and lock it. And let's go to Penguin this time. Again, you're going to repeat the same process. Now we're going to head to the Batman. You'll actually notice that the image has a background and so we're going to move this and keep in mind that there are many ways to remove a subject from the background but I'm going to show you just a few that you can use. In this case we can use object selection tool just because the background is very blurry and it's clear what the subjects are and essentially how this works it's going to outline things for you like this. So you're just going to click shift on your keyboard and then click the objects that you want and you can see that it made an outline on the whole entire image once you've made that you come down here to this mask icon and you just click it you can see that it removed the background and it looks awesome but because this is just a tutorial we're going to do an easy way as well that you guys can do just make sure that you pay attention to the edges because sometimes it doesn't extract properly so we're going to click on the image come here to select select and mask and then you'll see this menu right here before you start come up here to this arrow and click cloud detailed results essentially this will give you better results then you want to move the radius to something around the two three i wouldn't go much higher than that smoothness essentially makes it smooth around the edge instead of ruggedly or pixelated let's go with 10 and then you don't want to move feather because this essentially would make it sort of fade away similar to how we saw when we were making the squares here and then we're going to go with contrast let's go again with 10 percent once we're done with that we're going to come back here to select subject it's going to take a few seconds for it to select for you and you can see that it did some animation and now we're going to just click ok obviously it doesn't look like the poster that i've created because we have a few filters to add to this now we could add threshold like we did here but you can see that there's a nice pattern on this image and we can't do that with threshold so how do we do that well we're going to click on the image and then we're going to come to filter noise add noise like the before we're going to make it 10 Again, we're going to go to filter filter gallery and you can see right here that it actually went lime green and white and that's because my colors right here are actually that color so we're going to switch again to black and white and then we're going to go back to filter filter gallery and i kind of already have the settings here from my previous design but we're essentially going to add a half tone pattern two size seven contrast and we're going to go with pattern style dot then we're going to click ok once we're done that, we're going to duplicate the layer with Control J. On the layer that you just made, make sure that the fill is set to zero. And essentially, that's going to hide the image. So if I was to hide the original, you'll notice that there's no image there. Once you've set the fill to zero, you want to double click the layer and then come to drop shadow. You can see that it's adding this nice white effect right here. And these are the settings that I've used. You can essentially change all these settings right here, but make sure that the spread is at 100. Again, because if you don't, it's going to have this weird grainy effect towards the end. And for this design, we want it at 100. So you guys can pause the video and copy these settings if you want but just make sure that you have the blend mode at 
normal 100 opacity and the spread at 100 everything else doesn't really matter and it's up to you once you're done with that just click ok once you added the drop shadow now we're going to add a threshold again to make it look black and white like we had in our original design so we're going to come down to this circle icon right here and then we're going to go to threshold and then you're going to play around with the settings until you find something that you like which i'm going to go with something around the lines of that once you're done with that you want to go back to your zero fill layer and you want to right click and go to convert to smart object and the reason we're doing that is because we want to remove this white outline right here which is the drop shadow and to do that once you've created a smart object you're just going to make sure that you're on the layer, come to the mask layer here, and then you're going to grab black on your brush. Make sure you're on a soft round brush, and then we're just going to brush away the bottom. Once you're done with that, you want to move the threshold all the way above the Batman folder. Then you want to create a clipping mask to the whole entire folder. Now that we have essentially finished the images, we're going to make sure that we lock all the layers here. So let's lock the Batman and the threshold so we don't accidentally move it. Essentially, this is the entire post design, but we want to go above and beyond and make it look even better. And how we do that is by adding some small assets like more imagery or we can just add filters and displacement map so we're going to add a bat to sort of symbolize what batman is so again we're going to go to file place embedded and then we're going to add this image right here again we have to move the background and because i showed you guys how to do it one method i'm going to show you a different method for this one so make sure that you're on the layer come to selected and we're going to go with color range the reason i'm showing you this method is because the whole entire background that we want to remove is one solid color so once this menu opens just eye drop the color that you want to remove in this case the red and then click ok and you can see that it's selecting everything that's red then you want to just click mask icon. Obviously, if it does something like this, you just want to click control I on your keyboard while on the mask and it'll invert the mask just like you saw right now. You can obviously see that there's still some red outline on it and there's two ways to solve this issue. Option one is to right click this and fill it with a black color overlay or what you could do is come up to filter, other, minimum and then set this to one. And you can see again that it removed the red. And then I thought it would be cool to kind of make it look like it was part of the A. So we're going to do something along the line of that and we're going to make it just a bit bigger so that it kind of comes out from the M over here and it also from the N. And you can also see that there's still the red outline right here and that's pretty easy to fix as well. Make sure you come to the mask layer and then you want to go to your brushes, make sure that you're on a hard round and then you want to paint this away. So you can see right there how it painted everything red and that's because I'm using white everything in this mask that's white is going to bring back the original design whereas if it's black it's going to paint it away and then lastly we're going to add some filters on top to enhance the poster even further if you have no filters you can actually go to my previous video in the description and i'll have a gigantic folder filled with displacement maps and filters that you guys can use so i've added two textures that i've wanted to use but we need to play around with the blend modes to make it look good and so you're just going to find something that looks good to you Lastly, we're going to add some noise to the poster and to do this properly, we're going to come up to layer, new, layer, and then you're going to have this menu show up on this mode right here. You're going to switch this to overlay, fill with neutral color, 50% gray, and then you want to rename this to noise just so you know what the layer is. Once you've made the layer, click OK and then come to filter, noise, add noise, and then you want to add something that'll kind of add noise to the poster. In this case, let's go with 15. And essentially that's how you guys design this Batman poster that I've created. I would love to see you guys creation. Send me a DM in my Instagram, Creative Barrels, and comment below what movie you guys would like to see next. Catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.